Martha Roundtree, as I started to tell you before, was the wife of this client of my husband's and was a, was a great personality and a journalist. She was also politically to the right of Attila the Hun, and I was on the other side. So we made a good team because between the two of us, we would have balanced programming. And Ali, her husband, came to Serge and said, we've got to do something with Martha. I wish, I wish you'd introduce her to your wife. I have a feeling that those two women would hit it off and could put together something really extraordinary for television. Well, Martha has all kinds of ideas, and Lucy has the connections and the personality to pull it off. And so we met, and she told me about what she wanted to do in Washington. <clears throat> they lived in Washington, and she knew everybody. And Dwight Eisenhower had just become president, and Richard Nixon vice president, and she said, you know, if I can get airtime, uh, I really could put together something quite exciting. I want to call it Capital Close-Up, and we'll go to all these personalities all over Washington and do personal interviews with them. And people will really enjoy that. It'll be better than Meet the Press. We had a neighbor in Connecticut at that time who was very active in RKO, uh, um, RKO uh, radio, and WOR was part of that RKO radio uh, uh, organization. It was a corporation, and they, this was their radio uh, portion of the... Uh, and they were also starting television in those days. I also had a very good friend who had a program, Tex McCrary. He and his wife were on radio and then television on the RKO general stations. And he had the time slot 5.15 to 6 o'clock, Monday through Friday. And he and his wife decided they, were going, they had enough of that. They wanted to do something else. And he said, I tell you what, we'll go to your neighbor from RKO and we'll tell him that I'm willing to give up that time slot if he gives it to you and Martha. And Martha had a great reputation, and so that's what we did. And they said, fine, we'd love to do that, but you have to have a place to broadcast from because we can't have you broadcasting from Washington through our own facilities. So I went down to Washington, my husband and I, and Martha and her husband, and we went around town and we bought a house on 25th Street in Washington, D.C. It was a house that had belonged to Franklin Delano Roosevelt when he was the Secretary of the Navy and when he had just become paralyzed, where he just had polio. And they built the house into two ways. They, they reorganized the house. They didn't build it, it was there. But they reorganized the house into two parts. On the right side, you went in the door and that took you to the residence. On the left side, you went in a door, and there was an elevator that took you to the fourth floor. And he had the entire fourth floor as an office. And we turned the fourth, and Martha Roundtree moved into the residence with her husband and two little girls. And we turned the fourth floor with his private elevator into a studio. And RKO General built all the necessary uh, equipment and lead and, and wiring and whatever that had to be done in those days to use that as our studio. And the fourth floor at 25th, at the 25th Street Northwest became the studio for Capital Close-Up. Our first interview was with the then President Dwight D. Eisenhower at the White House. Our second interview was with the Vice President Richard Nixon and our third interview, third show, was with Ed, J. Edgar Hoover, who had never before or since done a program, a public program. But Martha had that kind of relationship with those people because of her meet the press and because of her, um, her balanced programming, even though they all knew she was very right-wing conservative. They all trusted her. And of course, they trusted her also because I was there balancing the other end. And that was the beginning of Capital Close-Up. And I stayed there until 
I went to work for David and to uh, and to CBS and NBC.